everybody welcome to our Tuesday evening online service Facebook live here at Elisha's Home and Ministries I pray you've had a wonderful couple of days since uh, Sunday morning as I wait for everybody to begin to come on I just want to uh, I want to encourage you if you're if you got a, a message that hey uh, Pastor Rob Ford is on Facebook live hit your share button because I know there are people out there that don't have me as a friend that might be able to really uh, maybe enjoy this, maybe not. Maybe they'll be a little offended by what I'm going to talk about today. But I really want to um, I want I want to share what's on my heart concerning a very important subject. And uh, I don't know, it might be a two-parter. It might only be a one-parter. We'll have to wait and see. But uh, it's uh, God continues to. How can I say this? He always surprises me. It's always an adventure when it comes to to uh, being a Christian. And uh, honestly, it's always an adventure. I just saw a good friend of ours from the ministry. Lives in Arizona. It's the Chicky just came on. Good to see you, Chicky. Yes, that's really her name. We love Chicky. She's a wonderful young lady that used to live in this area. Um, I just, you know... When I least expect it, God always does something fun. I had something happen today. I had somebody show up to give me a, a thank you card, which I don't need a thank you card or anything. But in it, it was a, a check that was like six weeks overdue. And the Lord kept telling me, I told you, I'm taking care of everything. And so I must repent for questioning him. He is so good. And uh, his mercy endures forever. Uh, I want to remind you, we have our Facebook Live on Tuesday, Wednesdays, and Friday nights at 7. Dr. Pegg will be on tomorrow, and I'll be on... Uh, actually, Pastor Tim will be on Friday night, I believe. And we have a surprise. Please share this with everybody. Uh, my second youngest son will be preaching yes Matthew uh, home from college he's now a senior in college he just finished his junior year and uh, he I I was gonna ask him if he wanted to speak you know a week or two before he he's going on another trip and he I didn't say nothing he came to me and he said oh by the way do you have anything planned for this Sunday and I thought, hmm, interesting. And I said, why? He goes, well, I have a message I'd like to share. I'm thinking, now here's a boy who's been share boy, a young man who's been sharing for, for three years with uh, people in his dorm, people all over the place. And so uh, it'll be great to have my son Matthew. He'll be sharing the message this Sunday at 1045 on Facebook Live. Please make sure you watch it if you can't be here. Otherwise, we would love to have you come and listen to what the Lord has laid on his heart. Uh, it will shock you how his voice is so much like mine and like my other two sons. Um, but he's matured so much in the last three years. And he uh, he's going to be making a trip this summer. And he wants to share about that. And he also has some things on his mind he'd like to share. So I can't wait to hear it. He's given me a couple little things that he's going to do, but other than that, we're just going to we're going to fly by the seat of our pants and see how things go. Uh, we praise the Lord. Um, Carl and Jawan made it home safely from their uh, from their vacation, a well deserved vacation. We praise the Lord for that. How God worked all that out. They got to see their daughter and just spend a lot of time together, and it's something that they've really needed for the last year. So we praise the Lord for that. So. Uh, it looks like everybody's pretty well come on and said hi to everybody. So I'd like to get started with this uh, this evening's message. I uh, have another quote from Derek Prince. Again, you know he's one of my favorite authors. He's gone home to be with the Lord. And uh, I used to listen to him actually when he was alive here on this earth. He used to have a, I believe it was a 15-minute message that he would share uh, on at the, uh, in Philly. Uh, on whatever Christian radio station Pastor Tim could 
could remind me what it was, but I believe it was in Philly. It was a Christian radio station right around noon, and he would always have these little little uh, mini sermonettes that he would share, and and I really enjoyed him. And then I began when I went to Bible school, I started reading a lot of his stuff. It was really good. So this is his quote: "You cannot live like other people." You have a special calling. You have special responsibilities. You're set apart, just as a soldier is set apart to, I love this, set apart to as a special way of life. Just as a soldier is set apart uh, to have a special way of life. And I thought, that's interesting. And it really began to make me think. And, you know, this day and age, the, the world really wants you and I, Christians, to shine like them and I want to talk about that today so how can we believers be in the world but not of the world you've heard that that's a a Christian uh, quote you hear a lot of so I'm gonna talk about that when we read uh, of the world in the New Testament we are reading the Greek word cosmos cosmos most often refers to the inhabited earth and the people who live on the earth which functions functions apart from God. Now, a lot of people thought cosmos was oh out in the at, you know out in the space and stuff, but it actually the Greek word is talking about the inhabited earth and the people who live on the earth. Satan is the ruler of the cosmos. Now, that's according to John chapter 12 uh, verse 31. It's now is the time for judgment on this world. Now, the prince of this world will be driven out. John 16:11 in the NIV, it says that about judgment, because the prince of this world now stands condemned. First John uh, five nineteen says, "We know that we are children of God, and the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Not us, but the world, unless we allow the evil one to control us." By the simple definition that the word "world" refers to, a world system ruled by Satan, we can more readily appreciate Christ's claims that believers are no longer of the world, we are no longer ruled by sin, nor are we bound by the principles of this world. In addition, we are being changed into the image of Christ, causing our interest, now listen to this, causing our interest in the things of this world to become less and less as we mature in Christ. And how many of you can really say that? As we get older in the Lord, certain things just don't matter as much. And I know there are people out there that might not even be Christians, and they'll even say, you know, as I get older, my priorities change. But your priority needs to change to that desire to be closer and closer to the Lord. You have to see that maturity going towards Him and not towards the ways of this world. In the um, John 17 in the Amplified Bible, uh, starting in verse 14, and I believe this is the... Uh, the prayer that Jesus had in the Garden of Gethsemane. Verse 14, it says, I have given to them your word, Jesus praying to the Father, the message you gave me. And the world has hated them because they are not of this world and do not belong to the world, just as I am not of the world and, not, and I do not belong to it. I do not ask you to take them out of the world. See, Christ didn't ask God to take us out of the world yet. But that he goes on to say, but that you keep them and you protect them from the evil one. That's a powerful prayer coming from the Son of God. Did you realize that? I was, excuse me, I got a piece of ice in my mouth, sorry. As believers, we should be set apart from the world. And I used to think that meant I needed to become a monk when I was a baby Christian. That's not what it's talking about. This is the meaning of being holy and living a holy, righteous life is to be set apart. And Pastor Tim actually talked about this in a sermon a few weeks ago, and it's really good. Anyway, we are not to engage in the sinful activities of the world, promote, you know, the way the world promotes sin. Nor are we to retain the, ins the insipid, corrupt mind that the world creates. Look around you, people. You see it all over the place. Unbelievable what people are allowing and saying that are of God and they're not of God. So rather, we are to conform ourselves and our minds to that of Christ. It says in Romans 12, 1 and 2. And this is supposed to happen daily as a commitment. If you don't do it daily, before you know it, you'll do it 
oh, every other day. Then pretty soon it'll become weekly, then monthly, and pretty soon you'll find yourself slipping away. So we must also understand that being in the world but not of it is necessary if we are to be a light to those who are in the spiritual darkness. We are to live in such a way that those outside the faith see our good deeds. And people say, oh, you're trying to work your way. No, no, that they see who we are and what we're doing, the good that we're doing. The Bible specifically said that Jesus went around doing good and healing all who were sick. Doing good. He did good deeds too. So anyway, let me go on. So we are to live in such a way that those outside the faith see our good deeds and our manner and to know that there is something different about us. We need to, you know, we, we might dress a lot like the world in different situations, but in stressful situations, we need to be walking like Christ wants us to walk. And in fun situations, you can be a Christian and laugh and make jokes and, and have a good time yet not be dirty and nasty. See, Christians who make every effort to live, and I like this statement, Christians who make every effort to live think and act like those who do not know Christ do him a great disservice. So, do you hear that? Christians who make every effort to live and think and act like those who do not know Christ do Christ a great disservice. Even the heathen know that by their fruits you shall know them, and as Christians we should exhibit the fruit of the Spirit within us. You all know uh, Galatians 6 talks about the fruit of the Spirit. Dwight L. Moody said, Christians should live in the world but not be filled with it. And this is such a simple statement. And Like I said, I used to be a sailor and I can relate. A ship lives in the water, but if the water gets in the ship, she goes down. She goes to the bottom. And I, I remember... <laughs> It's interesting when I was, um, I'm trying to remember, it was my first cruise when I was in the Navy. And again, it wasn't the love boat. Um, we, during a very rough storm, uh, an airplane that was trying to land crashed and went over the ship. And our ship couldn't turn, get out of the way fast enough. And we ran over this airplane. And yes, there was a man killed and one person got out and, and survived. But it ended up putting a gash or a hole in our ship. And so for the rest of our cruise, they had these big uh, fire hoses um, pumping water out of our ship so that it wouldn't go to the bottom. Now they had it sealed up and everything. And then when we pull into port to go on Liberty Call, they had divers, they had Navy divers go in and try to seal it up and fix it the best they could. But if water gets inside the ship, she'll go to the bottom. I guarantee it will. So just something to think about. So anyway, being in the world also means we can enjoy the things of this world, such as, now listen to this, such as the beautiful creation God has given us, but we are not to immerse ourselves in what the world's values are, nor are we to chase after the worldly pleasures. Pleasure is no longer our calling in life as it once was. And how many of us can say that? Like when we were teenagers, we saw all these other people having fun, having pleasure, doing all kinds of stuff that pleased them. And it got them in trouble most of the time because it was worldly pleasures. But as we grow in Christ, we should, we should automatically just begin to be drawn away from those worldly pleasures more to how can we please the Lord? And I, and I don't mean work our way to please Him. I mean... It should be a natural desire as we worship and we spend time with him. So here, here's another way of looking at what I'm trying to say. First, believers need to be in the world. It could be taken, and we have to be, right? It could be taken for granted that believers are in the world. We reside on earth after all. I mean, we know we are in the world. However, being in the world implies more than simply inhabiting it. We need to actually be involved in our societies. Matthew 28, 18 to 20 says, Jesus came up and said to them, All authority, all power, and absolute rule in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Now this is uh, in the Amplified. Verse 19, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Help the people to learn of me. Believe in me and obey my words baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe 
everything I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, remaining with you perpetually, regardless of the circumstance and on every occasion, even to the end of that age, or end of this age. What a powerful statement, those, those last three verses. You know, he's, he's basically, he's giving us that authority. The, uh, now, once he died, went, to the, went into the grave for three days and was raised from the dead, he took back whatever the devil had stolen and he gave it to us. He really, really did. So, they were not to set themselves apart from the world and expect others to come to, come to them to hear the truth. Did you hear that? They were told to go. Similarly, in John seventeen fifteen, as I read earlier, Jesus prayed regarding his disciples, I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. It's interesting, all the different commentaries I looked at for this, they always came back to this prayer, John 17. His disciples needed to stay in the world, not to be removed and to go to heaven. In Acts 1, 8 and Isaiah 43, 10, it tells us we are to be witnesses to the world. I'll be honest with you, you know, people say, well, why did you join the military? Because other people showed me that that, that was something I might want to do. They witnessed to me about my possible future. And we really need to be witnessing to people about their future. Uh, in the card that I received today, the, uh, the person thanked me for uh, always giving a salvation message at the at the service that I officiated at and the person was very sincere and said I pray that everybody heard it and that and that people received it and I always feel that way too I really believe and hope for that so let me go back Matthew 5 16 tells us that our light is to shine before others to point them to God allowing our light to shine requires us to be around people and it's funny because when I went to pre uh, prepare to officiate for that service, I had a chance to sit around and talk to probably 10 or 15 family members uh, of the person that passed away. And I wanted them to realize that I wasn't some kind of religious guy that wanted to, to jam Christianity down their throat with a hellfire and brimstone message while they were there. But I warned them that as a Christian, I would share the good news. And that's what's important, and share the, good, the light of Christ. So allowing our light to shine requires us to be around people, not just to stick our head in the sand. There are certain Christian sects, and I didn't know, S-E-C-T-S, okay, such as the Amish who believe in being a part Christ apart from culture and and eh, you know that that's what they feel God calling them to do and so I'm not going to say anything but um, you have to be careful with that kind of separation it's not the norm it's not what Christ called us to do they feel that about what they're supposed to do and in their own right they're they're setting their example and they're doing what they feel God wants them to do but as a whole, you and I, as we read the word, it says to go. So to be not of this world requires us to be free of what? Worldly influence. And that is so hard. This day and age, with all the technology and everything, you have to know different things that the world wants you to know, but to be able to participate in this world. So this does not mean that we need to participate in government or typical social processes. Does I mean I I don't have a problem with Christians particip. We need Christians in in the government and social things, but it means that we we do not act as the unsaved world do, and I can't tell you how many people claim to be born again Christians, and they try to separate their Christian faith from their business. They try to separate their Christian faith from their workplace. If you are a committed surrendered Christian, you can't do that. The Holy Spirit will convict you to a point that you can't do that. You'll be miserable. Yes, you can do it, but you'll be miserable. Romans 6, 6 and 6, 11. Now I'm going to give it to you in the Amplified and in the Passion. 
and then I'm going to read more in context. But this I found this to be interesting. Romans 6, 6 in the Amplified says, We know that our old self, our human nature without the Holy Spirit, was nailed to the cross with him, Jesus, in order that our body of sin might be done away with so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. See, we are no longer slaves to the sin nature, but uh, we need to act in accordance to his righteousness. And in the ample, in the Passion Translation, in verse 11, it says, So let, let it be the same way with you. Since you are now joined with him, Jesus is your Lord and Savior, you must continually view yourself as dead and unresponsive to sin or the old self or the old sins of pill while living daily for God's pleasure in union with Jesus, the Anointed One. I know that's a lot to compre comprehend, but it's so important. Now, let me read Romans 6, 6 through 12 altogether without skipping any verses in between. And this is from the Passion Bible. Let me wet my whistle here. Verse 6. Could it be any clearer that our former identity is now and forever deprived of its power? For we were crucified with him to dismantle the stronghold of sin within us so that we would not continue to live one moment longer submitted to sin's power. Obviously, a dead person is incapable of sinning. Verse 8, And if we were co-crucified with the Anointed One, we know that we will also share in the fullness of His life. And we know that since the Anointed One, Jesus, has been raised from the dead to die no more, His resurrection life has vanquished death and His power over Him is finished. So, well, let me just finish reading. For by his sacrifice, he died to sin's power once and for all. But he now lives continually or continuously for the Father's pleasure. It even says that Jesus lived continuously for the Father's pleasure. Verse 11. So let it be the same way with you or with me and so on. Since you are now joined with him, you must continually view yourself as dead and, un and I, this is what I read earlier, unresponsive to sin or its appeal while living daily for God's pleasure in union with Jesus. Verse 12, sin is a dethroned monarch. So you must no longer give it an opportunity to rule over your life, controlling how you live and compelling you to obey its desires and its cravings. See, I know that's a lot to consume, but it's so real. We have to quit living like the world. We are told to put to death things that are of our sinful nature or our old self and flee from immor immorality. Hmm. We train ourselves for godliness, 1 Timothy 4, 7. We're supposed to be imitators of God, uh, Ephesians 5, 1. We have nothing to do with unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. Ephesians 5.11 We submit to authorities and prepare ourselves for good works. Titus 3.1 Again, when you submit to the authorities, if they are doing something evil, you don't follow along with their evil. But God told us we're supposed to submit the, for, with those people that are over us, yes. But when they are doing something evil, you can't go against what the Word says. In essence, we act according to the new nature. We're supposed to anyway. We have been given the new nature that we've been given because of Christ rather than the sinful nature. And that's from 2 Corinthians 5.17, uh, verse 21 also, and Titus 3, 3 through 8. We're supposed to be ambassadors for Christ, 2 Corinthians 5.20. And I love that how, and you get a chance to look this up, 2 Corinthians 2, 5, 15 to 16. Spreading his fragrance through the world. Smelling, smelling, <laughs> spreading the fragrance of Jesus through the world, meaning people should be able to just sense, and I think they use the word smell because you you can sense what's going to happen by the smell in the air. You know, you know, like if the rain's coming on a spring day or a summer day, it's there's a scientific reason for it, but there's a fresh smell. If there's a fire, you can smell the smoke. Where there's smoke, there's fire. You know, so that spreading his fragrance. So people should should know that Christ had been there at one time because you were there. We used to make a joke at the um, at the warehouse I used to work at when I was a teenager, very young man, long time ago. 
that uh, this one young lady who was a secretary in the office, see, we all worked in this big warehouse where there were stinky onions. And this girl, she worked in the office. She, she, was a young, yeah, she was probably 19 or 20. She worked in the office and she always wore the perfume Charlie. And if you remember that smell. Well, if you've been smelling rotten onions all day and all of a sudden you get a hint of this fragrance flying through the air, you know who's coming. You know who was there. You walked through it. You knew that she had been there. And it was always a joke. Her fragrance would get to you before she would if she had to you know, come up and say something to you. Are we leaving that kind of fragrance where people know, hey, Pastor Rob was here. Something's different. Or, oh boy, Pastor Rob is here. The whole place is in chaos. You know, how? how? What kind of fragrance are we leaving for this world? 1 Peter 2.9 says, But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into this marvelous life. Wow. We're a chosen race now that we're born again. See, we live in the world of darkness, yes. But we are not part of that darkness. We are not of the world because we are in Christ. We have the light, and while we're still in the world, we are called to be set apart, to shine the light that others might know Him and be saved. I heard somebody say, a scuba diver, scuba diver lives or swims in the water but he breathes the air from above. So he takes his environment with him. It's, uh, you know, that, that backpack of the oxygen and stuff. He takes his environment with him. Believers are exhorted to be in the world or in the water, but not of the world. So a scuba diver can't breathe water, but he has to bring his water with him. So what we need to know that we need to bring Jesus with us everywhere we go, just like the scuba diver brings his air. Uh, Billy Graham uh, put it this way, at a meeting of church leaders in Seattle, Washington, one member of the group reportedly said that if the church is to make its greatest impact on our generation, it must become more worldly minded. But while, he said, while in one sense that may, be, that may bear some truth, in the biblical sense it's false. And I, I, want, I want to challenge you to think about that. Are we to become more worldly minded to reach the world and that that's something i want to leave you with you know are we supposed to if we are in the world but not of the world are we supposed to become more worldly minded so that we can draw people in something to really 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 be thinking about and uh i mean there are a lot of people out there you know on sunday morning they're living great and Monday through Saturday, they're living like the world, or they're living like they're, um, they're the world's the prince of this world, and that's the devil. So I'll just, I, I definitely will have a part two on this. I still have a few more pages to go, but uh, it's, it's so important. It's so important for us to know that we are supposed to be different, and not of, or not of this world that's the best way to put it we and if you're really born again you'll sense that you'll sense that in your life so as i close just you know keep keep our ministry in mind uh keep the people our, our staff or people that come to our church and continue to pray for us again you know we have people from arizona oregon washington um i think pastor tim said that there's a pastor in haiti that watches and there are people from all around the world that are watching us. And we just ask for your prayers that we will always do what God has called us to do. And um, be not afraid because living on this earth is for a short time. Living with him will be forever. So God bless. Have a great evening. And just be blessed with the spring weather that's coming up. And we just want to thank you for, for being, uh, for watching and again, if you're not sharing this, even though you're watching it, make sure you share it or uh, in about ooh, half an hour, I'll actually have the YouTube video up too. And just, you know, go on to that YouTube video and then share it because what you do is you can actually see all our other sermons too on the right-hand side of that YouTube channel. 
and it's there it's not there to pump us up it's there to help train up christians so that they can are prepared for uh the things in this world so god bless have a great week and i'll see you soon